So in 2016, I think it was, uh, we were working with students in our Makers Union Student Club, and uh, they had identified this electric boat race that was about an hour south of us, where uh, people were competing with electric boats to do a 24-mile course out across the bay. And we had been experimenting with designing things that ran off of lithium battery systems, and we, uh, students were really interested in putting together a boat to go and start competing at competitions like this. So that was 2017 was the first year that we competed at the Y Island Challenge uh, Electric Boat Marathon. Um, but uh, several years later in 2022, we began to compete at promoting electric propulsion. And so we showed up with our previous boat, which, have, uh, which has been you know, developed and perfected over a couple of years. Um, we showed up uh, and uh, we, we took away the race at first place. And we, were, um, we knew there was uh, a quite a bit of competition um, ahead for the next year with, that we come back. Uh, so uh, when we come, came back in the fall, we started talking about what, um, what the next plan is. What, what are we going to do with this year ahead? Are we just going to upgrade this boat um, or do another boat? What are we going to do to uh, continue keeping our place, in the, uh, our place in the promoting electric propulsion race? So the trimaran was kind of born through that. And so we went from producing boats that could compete uh, in a more of a marathon pace to boats that were designed more for sprint racing. So when we started out working on building our trimaran, at first we were looking at using just the outer hulls that you see here. Um, those outer hulls are from a sailing catamaran called a Supercat 17. We figured it would be best to build it as we see it now with the third hull in the middle as a trimaran. And so by doing that, we brought more buoyancy in just in general to the overall boat, but because that center hull tapers down to very, very narrow up in the bow, but then it comes back to probably about 18 inches or 20 inches wide at the stern, um, it's gotten more buoyancy toward the back. So what that ended up doing for us is giving us a little bit more balance of lift in the back of the boat. And, and then just in general, you know, it gave a, a longer water line, which helps with speed. We kept trying things and it didn't always work, but we learned from those things very quickly and improved upon them to the point where we're beating large engineering schools that have much more funding and so on. You may have the money and the knowledge of how to do it, but you don't always know exactly what's gonna happen until you're out there. We have a lot more experience of being out there than a lot of the other colleges. So we ended up fixing a lot of the issues that will come up before they have come up because we had the experience. All of the work that we do, it will help the earth in the long run because all of the tests that we do now and all of the different calculations to make sure that the boat is running its most efficient path leaving the least amount of emissions, it's going to help water technology for years and years to come. The people that are a part of this team are all so different from each other. It's quite interesting to see how like people with such different backgrounds can come together in such like a niche topic, electric boats. And I think it kind of just like shows how like we all come to it with like a dis different perspective. Like for environmental science people, it might be more about like using electricity rather than a like regular motor. Uh, for me, it's about like just like learning something new. And it's just so interesting because we all have like a passion for it, but for like a different reason. And so I think that's what really helps us like come together as a team because we're all just like so genuinely interested in what we do. So at some point we were looking at different remarkable things that people had done with electric boats, top speeds, distances, records, and things like that that were held. And we found that the Guinness World Record for the longest distance by an electric boat on a single charge without using solar was, I'm gonna say 139 miles. It was 224 kilometers. In knowing what our boat was capable of and in doing some of our testing, we thought there was a really good chance that we could break that record. In a boat like this, the way you break a distance record is by not doing it as fast as possible. You do it at the speed that's the most efficient speed for the hull. I can't tell you how many times people, just the people of Chestertown have been talking about like, oh, we've been seeing you go up and down Ch the Chester River for, you know, 24 plus hours now, what's going on, you know? Or when we tell them what's going on, they're, you know, taken aback. It's like, I didn't even know Washington had an engineering department. It's like, well, we don't, we just, it's, this is just a club. So all during the event, we had a spreadsheet that tracked um, who all the drivers were, uh, you know, what time they were gonna start and finish. Uh, we used that to log 
uh, all the laps completed, what time each lap was completed. And what we were doing was we were tracking the state of charge of the battery and the distances we had covered. We also started the track when we assumed that we would be breaking the world record. So, you know, we were doing all this sort of um, estimating of uh, how many laps we were gonna be needed before we broke that record. And we had a little bit of a delay at one point. We had a, a water pump uh, that broke out on the course and we had maybe a half hour, or maybe 45 minutes where we, um, we literally did a pit stop and changed out the, uh, the water pump on the, on the river. So a few things like that, that delayed us a little bit. And then finally, we, we, we knew that you know, our, our record breaking lap would be at um, like 2.10 in the morning. And so um, you know, we, we got a, some of the students down there, uh, David was driving at the time. And so we kind of celebrated as the boat came through and broke that lap. And so at that moment, we had broken the record. Uh, but we still had a fair bit of battery left. And so that was at 2.10 in the morning. And it wasn't until 8.30 or so in the morning that we finally, the battery was getting critically low. It wasn't that far, we could just finish the last lap and then call it quits. And so at that time, uh, we finished the 63rd lap, um, which uh, at 4.109 kilometers per lap, gave us a little over 258 kilometers in total. Uh, so the, again, the record being broken by about 21 miles or so, give or take. When you work in team environments like this and working towards a big goal, you have a lot of, um, uh, you have a lot of, you learn a lot of people skills. You learn a lot of team skills and it's pre pretty cliche on paper, but it really is um, uh, tough to lead a big project like this. And so the leadership aspect to me was a big deal because I, I, I enjoyed um, leadership in a lot of places in Washington College, but this was a, uh, this has certainly been one of the more challenging ones um, uh, because we were really competing with like the national level of schools, the best schools in the world. I'm glad that we all did this together and I'm glad that we pushed ourselves because it's something we've been planning and talking about for so long and to see it actually come through, it's just been like an amazing experience. I think it just shows the importance of just putting yourself out there and doing things. Um, you never know where you find yourself. I did not anticipate, you know, I thought I'd loved the STEM world behind and like it was only through the process of really talking, communing with friends and, and returning back to a group of people that I really enjoy being around and who are really supportive and, build, and build, we build each other up that, yeah, you, you find yourself accomplishing great things, I guess.